Hey guys, Mr. Wiz here. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new to this channel, we build video games. Right now we are working our way through a beginner's course in Unity. If you haven't done the previous lessons, I would recommend you check those out because we are working in order and it's going to be a lot easier for you to follow along if you're doing the lessons in order with the rest of us. Okay, so right now in my world, I have, well, I have the world that we created. So here I've got the mountains and the rocks and the trees, and I've adjusted all sorts of things in here to let myself drive around. So we did this in the last couple of videos. I have objects like this basketball that I can push around in my world, and I have other objects that I can't push around like the trees and the rocks, which I run right into, right? So we did all of that in the last couple of videos using the knowledge that we learned about objects, about colliders, about rigid body, um, about building things and downloading things. I made this traffic cone that I can drive over and knock over if I'm going fast enough. So we did all of that recently. What we're going to do in the next few videos is we're going to be adding more things to our world. We're looking at special effects, visual effects, sound effects, all the effects. That's what we're going to be focusing on for the next few videos. So today we're going to look at sound effects. First thing that you may have already noticed when building this game, if you used the Prometheus car controller like I did, you may have noticed that in the stats over here, when I have the Prometheus selected, I've got all these stats where I can change the car's speed and all this stuff, right? Down here near the bottom, there's something that talks about the sounds, and it's currently turned off. Use car sounds. Well, if you check that on, Unfortunately, your car still doesn't have sound. Here, let me unmute it. By the way, if you're ever playing in game view and you can't hear the sound effects, just make sure that it's not muted. There's a mute button in the game view. So make sure it's not muted so you can hear the sound effects. So I have car sounds turned on, but I still don't hear anything because they're not created yet. They haven't been set up correctly, okay? So let's do that first. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how sounds work in Unity. So down here where it says use sounds, there's a section for car engine sound and tire screech sound, and they both say none. So in your project tab down here, if you're in your asset folder and you got all the stuff there, the Promethean folder, if you double click on that, there is a sound folder right here, and I can double click on that. And this actually already has a car engine sound and a tire screech sound. So the game, um, I'm sorry, not the game, the car controller that we downloaded already came with these assets to help us get started, but they're not working yet. So how do we get these to work? So in this particular case, now this is not how it's always going to work, but this is, I'm introducing you to sounds, right? So later I'll show you some other ways to do it. But in this particular case, the car controller already has code written for the sounds. It's just waiting for you to include them into the code, right? So there's already code written on how the sounds should work. We just need to tell it what sounds to use. So it's looking for an audio source and we currently don't have one. Now, the first thing I try to do, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I try to just drag and drop these in there. And what you're gonna notice is it didn't work um, because that's not enough information. We need more than just the file. We need an actual audio source. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop both of these into my hierarchy window. So I'm just gonna drag car engine in here as its own separate object. It is its own object in my world. And I'm going to do the same thing for tire screech. If your hierarchy is full and you don't have an empty place to place it, you can always just drag and drop it into the name, um, which is called sample scene in mine, right? So if you drag and drop it into the name, it just puts it at the bottom of the list, okay? So either way, as long as it's in here. So I've got my two game objects, car engine and tire screech. I want you to notice they are not the child of any other object. They don't have to be, okay? They are perfectly fine being their own objects in the world. Also, with these particular objects, I'm not worried about their position. So right now you kind of see them in the middle of my world. That doesn't matter right now. And we'll talk about all that in a second. So over here on the right-hand side, if I select one of them, I'm selecting car engine right now. On the right-hand side, in my inspector window, it created the audio source. That's what we were looking for, right? Because it wasn't going to let us put this on the car until it was an audio source. So now there's an audio source called car engine. And these are the stats for it. So... Most of these we don't really have to mess with, but just to kind of go over them real quick, there is a mute option. Um, there's a play on awake. This is super important. 
with the sounds, whenever you put sounds in your game, regardless of how you're using them, you need to decide, when do I want this sound to actually play? Do I want this sound to play as soon as the game starts or not? So in the sense of the car engine, should the sound play as soon as the game starts? Probably, because the player's in the car, the car is on, it would make sense for the sound to be on. So I'm going to leave play on awake for the car engine. But for tire screech, should the tires be screeching as soon as I start the game? Probably not. The car's not moving anywhere yet. Tire screeching is something that should only happen in certain cases when I'm doing certain crazy moves while driving, right? So I'm going to turn play on awake off for tire screech, but I'm going to leave it on for the car engine. Now, the next option I have is loop. Is this a sound that's going to play one time or should it keep playing over and over again? Well, for a car engine, once again, I'm going to be in the car the entire time I'm playing the game. It wouldn't make sense to loop this sound. So I should loop the car engine. But for the tire screeching, should that be looped? Probably not. Once again, it should only play when I'm doing certain moves, when I'm hitting the brakes really hard or I'm making a sharp turn, right? So we're not going to loop the tire screech, but we are going to loop the car engine sounds. So play on awake and loop for car engine. Neither of those for tire screech. All right. Down below that, I have things about the volume I could adjust if I wanted to. Uh, priority has to do with when there's multiple sounds going on, how important is this sound? So for me, the car engine is probably a low priority, if I'm being honest. I'm not going to adjust it right now, but I may, I may adjust it later on. Um, because if there's other sounds in my game they're probably going to be more important that I hear those sounds than the car engine sound. Does that make sense? So volume, once again, right now they're both set to one, which is the maximum. I might want to change that later on when I start adding other sounds to my world. I might want to turn these sounds down so they're not quite as loud, they're not quite as annoying, they're not quite as uh, interruptive, right? Then we have things like pitch, which changes the way something sounds. Stereo pan has to do with if you're wearing headphones. How much of the sound are you hearing in the left ear versus the right ear? Then we have spatial blend. Now, this is a super, super important one. And that's why I wanted to make sure we talked about it. Spatial blend has to do with where the sound is coming from. So a 2D sound means that it's not coming from any one object. It's just a sound that the player hears. It could be coming from anywhere and everywhere at the same time. So think about that, right? Spatial blend means it's just a sound in the world that's coming from nowhere in particular. 3D blend means that it is coming from somewhere in particular. And we'll, we'll play around with that in a few minutes when I get to some other sounds. For these sounds, they're going to be centered on the player. So it's okay to leave them as 2D because we want the player to hear the car engine and the tire screech no matter where they are on the map, right? No matter where they are on the map, it should sound the same to them because the sounds are essentially going to be centered on the player, right? So I'm going to leave those two set on 2D for the sound. Later on, when we start putting sounds in our world, we might want to use 3D sounds if those sounds are coming from a particular part of our world, okay? So such as if I had a radio that was playing music and I only wanted to hear the music when I walked up to the radio, I would use 3D sound. I hope that makes sense. All right, down here, 3D sound effects do not, 3D sound settings do not affect us right now because we're not using 3D sounds. We're setting both these up as 2D for now. Okay, so now that I've got my sounds set up the way I want them to, I'm going to go back to Prometheus, back to where it says use sounds, and I'm going to drag the game object called Gar Engine for the car engine sound. I'm going to drag the, the object called Tire Screech for the tire screech sound. By the way, if you don't love these sounds, you can download other sounds from the asset store. These are just regular MP3s. What are down here where it says car engine and tire screech? These are very normal MP3 sound effects. In fact, you can listen to them just by clicking on the play button here. That's the tire screech sound, and this is the car engine sound. Very generic sound effects, right? So if you don't love these, you can find others in the asset store, or even there's a lot of free websites that have free sound effects you can download, right? So I'm just using these because they came with the pack. I didn't have to download anything else. Okay, so Prometheus now has the two sounds. The sounds are checked on. Let's test it out. Let's play it. I'm 
gonna mute it real quick because I want to make a note of something. Did you hear how the car engine changed while I was driving? That's really cool. Let's look at the car engine. Now I'm still in play mode. So while I'm driving, I'm gonna look at the stats over here and see what's changing. Because when we listen to the original sounds, the car engine was pretty normal. Oh, let's get back into play mode. I accidentally left it. So I'm gonna watch the stats over here as I'm driving. <laughs> Okay, that was pretty cool. Did you guys see that? So while I was driving, the car engine was pitching higher. So the pitch number was changing as I was going faster. And then also you heard the tire screech there a couple times when I turned really sharp. So that's programming that the controller already has into it. I didn't do that, right? That's part of the way that their car controller was designed. But I really like that. That's cool because uh, it made it really easy for me. All I had to do was put in the sound effect and the controller decided when the sound effect was going to play and also what the pitch of the car engine was going to be as I was driving. That was really, really cool. I like that a lot. Okay, so that's a simple first look at sound effects, but let's do more. So once again, these sound effects, if you didn't catch it, they were in the sound folder, which was in the Promethean car controller. You could have also, if you had a hard time finding it, just done a search for sound and it should have come up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start importing some of our own sounds. So what I want to do is I want to um, go to the asset folder, the original asset folder, and we're going to make our own sound folder. You might call it sound, you might call it music, but I'm just going to call it sound. So create folder, sound, and I actually am going to put some music in there though. So you can download free sound effects, you can download free music from a lot of websites. The one I'm using is a website called bensound.com. It is a great website for free music. I use it a lot in my classes. Uh, the only thing that they ask, the website asks, is that you give them credit when you use their music, right? So I'm going to import a sound, a music that I've already downloaded. So I'm going to right click here, import new asset, and then go find the song that I want to use. Okay, I've actually downloaded two songs now. One of them is called Moonlight Drive, which I thought was kind of good background music. Not bad. I also have one here called Funny Song. So either of these could be decent background music in my world. Um, so if you wanted to add background music to your world, super easy to do. So I've got my song files here, and you could literally, I'm going to use Moonlight Drive. All I have to do is drag and drop it into my world as a, its own object. Remember, once again, if an empty spot isn't available there, you can just drag it into the name of the scene, and it will put it on your list. So I've got it there, and then on the right-hand side here, I can edit the stuff, just like we were looking at before. So do I want it to play on Awake? If it's background music, probably yes. Do I want it to loop? Well, yeah, I want it to play over again when it finishes. And then I can edit these other stuff. The important one, of course, is the spatial blend we were talking about a few minutes ago. So 2D means it's coming from everywhere because it's coming from nowhere in particular, right? 3D means it's coming from an actual object. So right now I have it set to 2D. Let's see how it sounds. I will have the car engine still playing, so I may have to adjust some of my volumes to make sure I can hear things good. Yeah, I could definitely hear it, but the car engine's pretty loud. So I'm going to turn down the volume on the car and try that again. I like that a lot better. So I put my car engine volume down to about half, and my background music is still at max. I could hear it pretty well while I was driving. So you can definitely have multiple sounds in your world at the same time. Um, okay, so now let's talk about 3D sounds. So I've already downloaded in the Asset Store 
a model of a radio. I've never used this one before, so I'm kind of excited about it. It looks really cool. There were actually several free radios available in the asset store, but I just picked this one because I thought it looked kind of fun and old timey. So when I put the radio in my world, my goal is that I hear music when I get close to the radio, but not when I'm far, far away from it. So that is my goal for what we call 3D sound, right? So 3D sound is coming from a part of the map. So I've downloaded my radio. Let's see, is it in the prefabs? Yeah, there it is. All right, so where do I want to put it in my world? Let's put the radio over here by the building. I'm going to put it on the steps right down there. And I'm going to rotate it so it's actually facing, facing me. Right around there. Here, we'll just make it 90 degrees, make it even. There we go. So I've got a radio in my world, and I want music to come from that radio. So here's how I'm going to do this for 3D sounds coming from the radio. Instead of adding it as its own individual object, like I did the other sounds, you can also add music as a component. So down here where it says Add Component, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to type in Audio Source. Why don't I see it? Oh, there it is. Audio source down there at the bottom. Boom. So I've got an audio source as a component on my 3D radio. And it's looking for an audio clip. It currently says none, right? So now I'm going to go grab one of those songs that I downloaded and I put in my sound folder. And I'm going to set it as the audio source. So I'm going to use funny song as the song that plays from the radio. So I'm putting it right there. I do want it to play on awake, and I also want it to loop. Did I remember to loop the background music? Yes, I did. Okay, so I have it coming from the radio. I also have it looping. Now, here's the important part. Since I only want it to come from the radio, I have to switch the sound blend to 3D sound. Okay, you guys with me? So 3D sound means I will only hear it from a certain part of the map. Okay. So I've set my spatial blend to 3D, which means that this radio now plays uh, music only from the radio. It has a 3D sound, so the closer I get to the radio, the better I will hear it. And the further away from the radio I am, the worse I will hear it, okay? So down below here, we've got the 3D sound settings, where we can adjust things like the minimum distance and the maximum distance. So this is telling me how far away is the farthest I can be and still hear the music? But max distance is super important. Min distance is less important, I feel like. But here we go. So if I zoom out on the radio, I want you to notice something. You see this blue circle here? This wasn't here before. Um, if you can't see the blue circle on your screen, you might have one of your gizmos turned off. There are icons that can turn on and off visual effects. You can kind of see things. But if you do see this blue circle, that is representing the audio. And right now, it's actually representing the minimum distance. So if I change this to a smaller minimum distance, like maybe instead of 1, maybe 0.5, now it's a smaller circle, right? So that's the minimum distance you can be to the radio. Actually, like 0.5. I'll probably leave it there. If I zoom out, and I have to zoom out pretty far, there's another blue circle. That blue circle is the max distance. So right now, if I'm 500 meters away from the radio, I can still hear it. Now, will I hear it very well? Absolutely not. I will barely hear it at all. But I would still be able to technically hear it. So you, when you're designing your 3D sounds, you need to decide what is the minimum distance going to be and what is the maximum distance going to be. You know what? I think I might put the minimum distance back to 1. Let's just keep it at its original setting for now. 1's not too bad. But the maximum distance, maximum distance is way too big. So for me, I don't want to hear the music probably until I'm in this town area. You following me? So I'm going to change the minimum so it just kind of covers the town area. So 500 is way too big. What's 100 look like? 100, still pretty big because my car starts here. I don't want to hear the music right away. So let's go smaller. What about 30? Ooh, 30 might work. Yeah, for what I'm doing, 30 looks perfect. So I'll only be able to hear the radio inside this part of town. Make sense? 
So that's my maximum distance that the radio noise plays. And then the minimum distance is right up on top of it, basically. Okay. So, I'm not done yet. Below this, you guys see this curve? This curve represents the volume. So if I'm standing within one meter of it, it's playing at the max volume. It's playing at one. If I'm standing, you can look at this graph here, about five meters away from it, it's only playing at half volume. If I'm standing 10 meters away from it, it's barely playing at all, maybe at 0 0.3, 0 0.2, somewhere in that ballpark. And then farther away at that maximum range, it's going to be almost un unhearable, right? So this is the volume based on your distance. You can change this. So where it says logarithmic roll off, I can change it to linear, which is a straight line, which is actually my favorite. I prefer linear. You can also do custom where you make your own, which is a little bit difficult. So basically what you need to ask yourself is when it comes to the sounds, do you only really want to hear it when you're sitting right next to it and barely hear it at all when you walk away? Or do you want it to, to gradually increase at a pretty steady pace as you're getting up to it? Here, let's try it both ways. Let's try logarithmic, and then we'll try linear and see how it sounds. Right now, I don't hear that music at all. I hear the other background music. There, I just started hearing it. Did you guys see how that worked, right? I could start to hear it a little bit as I started coming to town, but it really didn't get loud until I got close to it. So let's change it now to linear and see how, how that plays out. You guys catch that? I could start hearing it a lot earlier and it seemed to get louder a lot faster as I was getting up to it. So that's going to be the big difference between linear and logarithmic. In linear, at the max distance, you don't hear it at all. At the closest distance, you hear it very well, but it's a gradual increase. Whereas logarithmic, it's a very slow increase at first. And then when you get close to it, it increases very quickly. So those are the two big differences in the volume. So when you're putting something in your world that has sound coming from it, you need to decide, is it going to be logarithmic or linear? Like I mentioned, there is a custom one as well, um, but I don't really mess with that very much because I find logarithmic and linear both seem to suit my needs, depending on what I'm doing. So I'm going to leave mine on linear, I think. So that's the basic idea of sound. So once again, to recap, when you're using sound in your world... Make sure that you adjust its settings. The first thing you need to think about is, do you want it to play when the game starts or not? Do you want it to loop or not? Adjust the volume. Is this a 2D sound or a 3D sound? Do I want to hear it all the time, regardless of where I am on the map, hence 2D? Or do I want to only hear it at certain parts of the map, hence 3D, right? So that's the big difference. And then, of course, if you are using 3D like we did with the radio, you would then want to decide the distance, the min distance, the max distance, and whether it's linear or logarithmic. So that's my quick take on simple sounds. Remember, once again, any MP3 can be played as a sound in Unity. So whether it's a sound effect or music or something else that you download and find, there's so much free stuff out there either on the Unity Asset Store or other places. There's a lot of good background music, by the way, on the Unity Asset Store, if you didn't know that. You can just go in the Unity Asset Store, you can go to Audio, switch it over to Free, and see all the stuff that's out there. There's right now 858 free audios. That's amazing, right? 
And you can also narrow down your search. So if you just want to do music, for instance, I can do a search for free music and find stuff here. So absolutely free music. There's this great pack here if you're doing a fantasy type world. 25 free fantasy background tracks. Amazing stuff for free in the Unity Asset Store. So yeah, so many resources available to you when it comes to sound effects or music. A lot of good sound effects as well. So in the audio section, um, right there I have sound effects selected. I can select that as a subcategory. Switch it to free. And once again, a bunch of free sound effects. If there's a particular type of sound you're looking for, you can always do a search for it in the uh, search bar up there. So have fun, add some stuff to your world. I would encourage you to add background music, and I would encourage you to add some sort of 3D sound. Think about what is the sound coming from. So maybe if you have an animal in your world, I had one student who put a bear, a grizzly bear in his world, and he put a growling sound on it. So as you got closer to the bear, you would hear it growling. It was kind of cool, right? So feel free to put whatever music, whatever sound effects you want to in your world. Just make sure you're thinking about those options. Is the sound 3D coming from one area or is the sound playing from everywhere? And then the volume and all the other stuff we talked about, okay? Have fun, and then I will see you guys in the next video. If you learned something new today, please click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, and I will see you all later. Have a great rest of your day.